Bermuda, Bahama, we're gonna disappear, pretty mama. Let's talk about that. Good mythical morning. You've heard of the Bermuda Triangle, that yes. mysterious ocean region where planes and ships inexplicably go missing. What is going on there? Well, today, we're gonna take a deep dive into a few specific instances. We're gonna examine those and see if we can surface bloop, 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 some answers. All right, first of all, just to refresh your memory, because I didn't know this, exactly well, if you where don't know is, it, how you get supposed to remember? Well, because I learned. Oh. Exactly where is the triangle? Well, it's huge. It's actually one million square miles going from Bermuda to Puerto Rico to Miami. That's a lot of space. And uh, stories go back very, very early. Even Christopher Columbus said that his compass stopped working when he was in the Bermuda Triangle area. Mm. He was also known to be addicted to opiates. Uh, <laughs> I've... <laughs> I've flown through here. So, so have Are you. Are you addicted to opiates? No, and I also wasn't lost. I mean, it, do what? ships avoid this area? No, it's actually one of the busiest shipping areas in the entire world. So people don't professionally or commercially avoid, avoid this the Bermuda area. Triangle. But there's lots and lots of stories, and despite the fact that scientists have given lots of great explanations, natural explanations for what has happened, there are lots of supernatural explanations, paranormal, even mm. extraterrestrial explanations for some of the stuff that has happened. Is that right? All right, yes. well, let's get into some specifics here. I want to take you on flight 19. Uh, one, this instance made the Bermuda Triangle very popular. Okay. Okay. It wasn't just one plane, though. It was five torpedo bomber planes mm. that, uh, a squadron, if you will. I, use <laughs> I will. The, I use the term loosely. On December 5th, 1945, uh, those five planes took off from Fort Lauderdale, Florida <laughs> yeah. uh, for a training exercise. For, for, uh, did Fort I say Lauderdale. Fort Lauderdale? Yeah, that's Almost. right next to Fort Lauderdale. <laughs> uh, and the guy in charge, Lieutenant Charles C. Taylor, started to report that his compass was malfunctioning. Uh -huh. And then that his other compass was also oh, malfunctioning. Backup compass. Uh, so they're both going out. He became disoriented and got lost inside of the triangle. He looks down and he's using like land masses to orient he and his team. Mm -hmm. And he's like, well, I think that's the Florida Keys. So I'm like southwest of Florida. We got to start heading east. Okay, mm -hmm. well, what he doesn't know is that he's going out into the ocean. He doesn't know what's going on. It's at, towards the end, the last thing that uh, was reported that he said was, when the first plane drops below 10 gallons, a fuel, mm -hmm. we all go down together. No, not me. It's the last they heard of him. The Navy sent two search uh, search planes out there. Th then they conducted a massive search. No planes were found. No wreckage, no debris, no body, no b debris yeah. or debris. Yeah, both, both of those. Were ever found. So, what actually happened? I mean, what's the most feasible explanation? Well, first of all, uh, two compasses are going out. It's a little bit weird, but it, it happens. It can happen. Yeah. Faulty equipment, yeah. Um, plus, it was severe weather that made navigating worse, and they ran out of gas. But but where did they go once they hit the ocean? Well, uh, the prevailing theory is that the, um, what's it called? The Gulf Stream, okay? The Gulf Stream took them away just like Dexter's dead bodies. Do you want to know what really happened to Flight 19? Yes. Hi. Who I'm, are you? I'm Dawkins. <laughs> What really happened to Flight 19 was the compass. Both compasses were not malfunctioning. They had reoriented themselves towards a different electromagnetic field that was being given off by an alien mothership. There it is. The alien mothership of the alien people. Very difficult to pronounce, but the closest you can get in English is <laughs> So the <laughs> people drew them Are you all right? Yes, to their ship. They brought Charles and his boys into the ship and where they poked and prodded them. Emphasis on prodding. There was oh, a lot of prodding. You're into that. No, I'm just giving you the facts. Anyway, and then they took them to their home planet. Again, difficult to pronounce, but I like to call it. And I know what you're asking. Yes, they did interbreed with the <laughs> women. They're still there, though. They're to have half breed <laughs> human children. That's what really happened. What, is that a superior race? or? It's great. Well, I don't, I don't mean to burst your bubble, but. Uh, I didn't follow half of that, and the, the half that I understood, 
I uh, I just don't believe. I mean, well, that's just... fine, Link, because I've got another one uh, from the USS Cyclops. Actually, this was a massive carrier ship okay. that supplied fuel to American fleets during World War One. In 1918, it set sail from Rio, Brazil, where they had the Olympics recently, and uh, Why not? It, it was filled with 309 passengers and a load of manganese ore. How many so eyes did it have? It's it's headed for Baltimore, and it never gets to Baltimore, Maryland. Massive search is initiated, but it was never found. So what actually happened to this? It's a huge ship. How does it just go missing? Well, it actually turns out that there were other ships just like this that transported this type of corrosive material, and they were known to be completely just ratted out on the inside. No structural integrity because of the stuff was so cor corrosive. Okay. There's actually accounts of ships like this just being out on the open seas and just splitting in half and sinking. There's also something really interesting, though, that happens in this part of the ocean where there are these huge methane gas bubbles that come out of these canyons. They come up and they can actually come under a ship and then the ship, because the density of the water changes under the ship, it drops down into the bubble, waves go over the side, and then the whole ship sinks. So that's a very likable, uh, likely explanation also. Would you like to hear what really happened with the USS Cyclops? Yeah, I would. I, uh, welcome to the show. What's your name? Thanks for having me. My name, my name doesn't matter. <laughs> I'd rather be... Mysterious. I'd rather okay. draw your attention to the facts. Okay. okay. What are the facts? I know the facts. Listen, you were very close um, when you were talking about the methane, but you hadn't connected all the dots, shall I? You shall. Shall I? Please. Okay. First of all, have you heard of Atlantis? Oh, yeah. Lost, I've heard of it. Lost in city stories. of Atlantis. Mm -hmm. And do you know who lives and rules and is friendly over Atlantis? Who's that? Aquaman. <laughs> and you know what he loves, Aquaman? What does he love? Manganese. He uses it. He uses it as a, as a supplement. Did you know that there's a side effect of manganese consumption in high high quantities? What is that side effect? The methane release for, uh, from the anus and oh, to gosh. and up into. I know how a fart works, man. You don't have to explain it. <laughs> and that, well, that it is. That does explain it, though. That's why it's important because his 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 fart bubbles mm. sunk the ship, the Cyclops. Okay. Aquaman versus Cyclops, who wins? That's a great explanation of what really happened to the USS Cyclops. Link, do you have another story? I do, of course I do. I've just been over here uh, waiting for my opportunity to share it. Okay. I haven't been doing anything. All right. The SS El Faro. I mean, all of these things happened a long time ago. Yeah. You know, people say, oh, a long time ago, people things happen, and then you're just like, I don't believe it. Right. But what if it happened last October? Oh, gosh. <laughs> I know. Some of the words uh, I say, like, people things happen. Yeah, yeah. I don't, but just, we all know what you mean. I, as it's long fine. as you know what I mean. We know what you mean. A huge cargo ship going from Jacksonville, Florida to Puerto Rico, skirting the edge of the Bermuda Triangle. Uh, 290 cars and trailers, microwaves on board, and 33 people. But you know what whoops up? What? Whoop. Joaquin, the tropical uh, storm. Main engine fails, there's no power. The ship was taking on water, and then they lose contact. Uh, they go on a massive search. Using sonar, they locate the ship, okay? They locate the ship down at the bottom. It's just nestled down there, uh, 15,000 feet on the ocean floor. Mm -hmm. But no crew were found except for one guy. Only one guy was found. All the rest of the crew, we don't have a clue what happened to them. I mean, your guess is as good as mine. The, the point is... Do you want to know what really happened? Absolutely. Faro? Yes, you got your pipe in there. You're I'm the Gorton's fisherman, and you can trust me. Do you ever wonder why? Sorry, I have a hernia. <laughs> okay. Well, you've been. What have you been lifting? Mm, fish. <laughs> yeah. Do you ever wonder why they call you a tropical storm Joaquin? No, tropical uh, storm no. Joaquin. No. Why? Because of wonder. the man behind it. Who? Okay. The who's man that? behind Joaquin is Joaquin Phoenix. Oh. I googled Joaquin Phoenix with car, and you know what came up? With car? With car! Car. You know what came up? What? Joaquin Phoenix with cars. Okay. He loves cars. All right. And I'm not following he you. He started the hurricane to acquire the cars from oh. the El Faro. Oh, from the ship, yes. Yes, he did it. He started the hurricane with his special technique. With his special technique. Uh. He's 
started the hurricane and until we could get to the cars. He's right. <laughs> I was there. I remember seeing you there. <laughs> yes, yes, I was. Mr. Dolphin. I was swimming around and I saw Joaquin put his flipper hand into <laughs> the ocean and he started shaking it like like this. <laughs> he whipped up a hurricane. I was there, yep. The hurricane brought down the ship and... Yep. And all the, <laughs> all the crew were eaten by me! <laughs> anyway, that's what really happened with that's S.S. Exactly El Faro. <laughs> Believe it, you heard it here. Thank you for liking, commenting, and subscribing. You know what time it is? I'm Aiden, and that was Alex, but he left. We're from Cleveland, Ohio, and it's time to spin the wheel of mythicality. We have a second Will It poster. This is volume two, available at rentlink.com slash store. Yeah, buy that or buy them both together, guys. Do it. Click through the Good Mythical More now, because Rent and I are going to wrestle each other. Uh-oh. <laughs> There's a video game involved. Yep. Bad lip reading. Hey, you fellas. What do Easy babies. Whoa. It, it, it. Oosh. <laughs> I can't get up. I'm stuck. <laughs> I don't know what to do. I'll, Nothing I'll show you what it is. <laughs> oh, <laughs> gotcha. Uh, Wearing my tidy whiteies. 